So for alpha thalassemias, alpha thalassemia is a deletion on chromosome 16. You can see several different types of alpha thalassemias, and we'll discuss those here in just a minute. Uh, there are two different types of deletions that you can have as well on a minor thalassemia, and those are cis deletions and trans deletions. The cis deletion, which is, means it's on the same chromosome, are often seen in Asian populations. And then the trans deletions, where it's on an opposite chromosome, all on chromosome 16, uh, are often seen with African Americans. So let's look at the four different types of alpha thalassemias. So first to start off, your normal genetic makeup is the four alpha chains. If you have, are missing one of those alpha chains, that is an alpha thalassemia minima. Uh, this basically is going to be silent. It is someone that is a carrier and a carrier only, and they typically don't show any symptoms. Okay. When we move to uh, deleting two of the alpha chains, you can have trans, see here where this is on two different chromosomes, or you can have cis where it is on the same chromosome. Both of these translate into an alpha thala thalassemia minor, and your symptoms are usually mild. It gets you a mild microcytic hypochromic anemia, and that's about all you deal with. When you delete three of these chains and you are left with only one alpha chain, that is HBH disease or hemoglobin H disease. This gives you a moderate to a severe microcytic and uh, hyperchromic anemia. And when all of your alpha chains are deleted, that is known as HB Bart's or hemoglobin Bart's disease and that is not compatible with life, causing hydrops fatalis. Um, of note, during hemoglobin Bart's disease, during the uh, fetal stage, uh, before the uh, spontaneous abortion can occur, uh, we do see an increase in the gamma globulin genes. All right, let's move on and discuss beta thalassemias. Beta thalassemias are a chromosome 11 point mutation, and it's often seen in Mediterranean populations. There are two different types of beta thalassemias, major and minor. In the beta thalassemia minor, you're just seeing the beta chain is underproduced, and it is often usually asymptomatic. You don't see a lot of symptoms with this due to missing one beta chain. For beta thalassemia major, you have the beta chain is completely absent. Uh, in a peripheral smear, you're going to see target cells and anisopoikilocytosis. For the target cells, that is often seen in liver disease, post splenectomy, thalassemias, and hemoglobin C, as well as our beta thalassemia. And for the anisopoikilocytosis, what that term means is a variance in shape and size of the red blood cell. Uh, this variance will require blood transfusions to correct any issues with. You'll see on x-ray a crew cut skull. This crew cut skull um, is due to a marrow expansion for creating more blood cells when the marrow expands because of the uh, poor red blood cells that are produced. We also do see hepatosplenomegaly, and as you can see here in this photo, this is a picture of a spleen that was removed from a child. Um, the spleen is grossly enlarged due to the poor red blood cells due to his beta thalassemia. There is also an increased risk of parvo B19 induced aplastic crisis. Uh, mostly this is going to be due to the um, spleen not functioning correctly. The spleen does help uh, reduce the risk of parvo B19 problems. Uh, you, your, hemo, your fetal hemoglobin is increased uh, during the first six months of life, and that is actually protective of the disease uh, with beta thalassemias. But after those first six months, 
uh, you do lose some of that protection and will require um, a treatment of blood transfusions and the only curative treatment is your bone marrow transplant. Moving on to lead poisoning. Lead poisoning will cause a decrease in heme synthesis that is because of the inhibition on the ALA dehydrogenase and the ferrochelatase enzymes. You'll also see uh, ribosomal RNA degradation being reduced with lead poisoning and this causes basophilic stippling which we'll see a picture of here in just a moment. The symptoms for lead poisoning uh, spell out L-E-A-D and these symptoms are lead lines on the gingiva which are uh, Burton lines and then you have uh, lines on, of lead on the long bones so as you can see over here in this x-ray those are lead lines that are indicative of lead poisoning. The E in lead symptoms is encephalopathy as well as erythrocyte basophilic stippling and you can see at the head of these arrows over here the basophilic stippling a in lead poisoning symptoms is abdominal colic and sideroblastic anemia, which we will discuss here in just a few moments. And the D is uh, drop, so you have wrist drop and foot drop. Um, we do discuss dimercaparol as, uh, as well as EDTA as the first line treatments for lead poisoning. And a line to remember is that it sucks to be a kid who eats lead. This leads to succimer, which is uh, used for chelation in children. Um, oftentimes lead poisoning is, is seen in older homes uh, prior to the 1970s in the paint. The paint will chip off, the children will um, eat the lead, and then that can cause lead poisoning. Uh, some cheap toys as well is often seen um, with lead poisoning, although the new regulations have uh, decreased that significantly. Moving on to sideroblastic anemia. Sideroblastic anemia uh, has three different causes. Uh, the first is genetic, and this uh, is an X-linked defect in the ALA synthase. It can be acquired in a myelodysplastic syndrome. or it can be a reversible cause of the sideroblastic anemia, which is most commonly due to alcohol. Uh, this can also be seen with lead poisoning, as I just mentioned. Uh, vitamin B6 deficiency, copper deficiency, uh, drugs such as isoniazid or linezolid can also cause a sideroblastic anemia. So don't always assume that it's alcohol um, because there are multiple potential causes for a sideroblastic anemia. Looking at the labs for sideroblastic anemia, the iron is going to be increased. Your total iron binding capacity is normal to a decreased level and your ferritin is increased. Using a Prussian blue stain, we see a ring sideroblast as you can see here in this picture. There's a ring around that cell. And on a peripheral smear, that is where we see the basophilic stippling that we saw on the previous slide. The treatment for uh, sideroblastic anemia is pyridoxine. Uh, pyridoxine is also known as uh, vitamin B6. And that is actually a cofactor in the ALA synthase, which as we discussed above, the genetic factor of an X-linked issue in the GLA synthase, or in the ALA synthase gene.